This episode of News Dump is brought to you by HelloFresh and by Purple. Things have not been going great for notorious conspiracy theorist and grifter Alex Jones over the past few years, and it is impossible for him to blame anyone but himself for his problems. But somehow, things just got even worse for the figurehead of InfoWars because he is now on the hook for an untold amount of money that could completely decimate whatever is left of his media company. And look, we love a good Alex Jones freak out as much as anyone else who understands how completely deranged and detached from reality his takes are. Uh, he's just so damn animated when he lets loose on the mic. Yeah, he just rips his shirt off. The man, he missed his true calling as a professional wrestler. Yes, I think this is him making up for lost time with that. And, and as, as uh, a lot of people, especially if you watch this show, are aware, uh, he has come out through lawsuits and said that it is all an act and he's just like making it all up for theatrics, uh, which we'll get to, but uh, oh, yeah. Maybe he's just saying that. Where, <laughs> where does the real Alex Jones begin? Exactly, but look, specifically with this, he absolutely 100% deserves the judgment that yeah. he had coming to him. This is pretty indefensible. Yeah, because it relates uh, specifically to the Sandy Hook cases, uh, which uh, those just reached their verdicts this past week, at least two of them. Yeah, so if for some reason you're not aware of this lawsuit and want a quick recap, Alex Jones was sued by the parents of the victims of the Sandy Hook shooting that took place back in 2012. They sued Alex Jones because he claimed on his show that the massacre was a left-wing hoax and that the parents who appeared on the news and various media outlets uh, clearly distraught at the deaths of their young children. They must have been crisis actors, according to Alex Jones and Infowars. Yeah. Which is fucking repugnant. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that resulted in even worse. They got... The parents got harassed. They got death threats. Uh, they, these people were already suffering from the horrific loss of their children. Yeah, and then had their like, lives just turn even more to shit over the next several years. Unironic Infowars watchers really went after these people because they Some were them, sure that this was all a big hoax to take. This was one of the many hoaxes that appears uh, oh, frequently in the United States yeah. where they're coming after your guns. So this one specifically uh, in people's minds went way too far because they involved yeah. children, not that it was an actual real they, thing. They harassed the shit out of some of these parents. Some of them, they had to move multiple times. Yeah. Uh, so imagine losing your child to gun violence and then getting harassed by weirdos from the internet yeah. nonstop and having your life threatened over it because they uh, assume that you're in on some big government plot. It's, yeah. it's horrific. So, uh, and also this was not the same lawsuit where Alex Jones admitted that he's actually uh, playing a character on Infowars and that his role as a conspiratorial news anchor was actually performance art. His words. Uh, but uh, that point was definitely argued in these cases as well. Yeah. In, in fact, in depositions related to one of the lawsuits, Jones confirmed that he was lying about the event being a hoax, calling it a tragedy, but wouldn't go so far to admit uh, any wrongdoing from himself towards the victims and their parents. Yeah. Uh, no. So within the lawsuit, he's like, yes, this absolutely happened, but didn't say, I'm sorry, because that would imply guilt and didn't mm -hmm. say anything that would implicate him as guilty. Yeah. So Jones even went so far as to file a countersuit against the parents who have been through so much, but he sought $100,000 uh, in court costs with his defense in all of these cases being freedom of speech, which actually does go a long way in protecting someone in a defamation case, um, except for the fact that in this case specifically, uh, the families actually suffered threats and abuse as a result of his claims. Yeah, for a very long, extended period of time during this which... This happened nine years ago. During which Alex Jones had many opportunities to call, Change, yeah. call off the dogs mm -hmm. and did not. So I, I think that's where that's <laughs> where we get to where we are now. Yeah, well, it looks like Jones's blatant disregard for disproving any of the claims in the case made this an easy decision for the judge. Jones and his legal team simply did not comply with court orders to produce information, and his actions throughout the proceedings also helped make this judgment a little bit easier. Uh, the end result is a default judgment against him and a win for the parents associated with these lawsuits. From the Austin Statesman, an Austin judge has issued default judgments against conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, citing his pattern of bad faith in dealing with lawsuits by parents of two children killed in the 2012 mass shooting at Sandy Hook Elementary School. The rulings mean the lawsuits will proceed to a trial to determine how much money Jones and his Austin-based InfoWars media system must pay the parents for defamation and emotional distress caused by the broadcast that called the school shooting a hoax. It's no longer a matter of whether Jones writes a check 
to the parents, said Bill Ogden, a lawyer for the parents. It's now how big a check is going to be. District Judge Maya Guerra Gamble said the rarely granted motion for a default judgment was appropriate because prior sanctions, including $150,000 in court ordered penalties, failed to change Jones's behavior. Quote, in considering whether lesser remedies would be effective, this court has also considered defendants' general bad faith approach to litigation, Mr. Jones's public threats, and Mr. Jones's professed belief that these proceedings are show trials, Guerra Gamble wrote in three similar orders. Ogden said he was thrilled at the result, quote, it's been a long time coming for these parents and we're happy the way it worked out. In Texas, we call default judgments death penalty sanctions. We learn about them in law school, but none of the lawyers I've spoken with have ever had this happen. It's like a unicorn of the law, Ogden said, but we've never seen such blatant disregard for a court's authority the way we have here. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, just defying all court orders, uh, acting like this doesn't exist, yeah. uh, probably contempt of court at some point, and uh, continuing on with uh, not acknowledging the courts court. don't like it when you simply uh, <laughs> ignore them. Ignore them, and then uh, in some cases continue to uh, do exactly what the parents are saying you're doing. Yeah, um, uh, they also add that the uh, the ruling can be appealed. It's safe to assume that it, it, <laughs> it will be. Yeah, that's the one thing. Hold that on, active on. <laughs> Hold on, I didn't know that would happen. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Uh, but the real question is how much Jones will have to pay once this is all said and done and whether or not it will be the final nail in the coffin for InfoWars, who, again, has had a real rough... They, I mean, they they peaked around 2015 or so, and uh, it's, been, it's been into just downhill through all the shit since then. Yeah, and... Uh, you look, I have no idea, but you would assume like a jury in this case would uh, see the evidence and uh, probably want to punish this man very badly financially. So you can assume that these yeah. settlements will be quite large, considering just like the court costs and stuff are already in the six figures. Yeah. So and, and they've been dealing with this for so many years. So it's like this actually might really fuck up Infowars. Good. Yeah. Um, but uh, while we're on the topic of right-wing grifters, why don't we check in on MyPillow CEO Mike Lindell? It's been a couple of weeks. Yeah, what's he been up to? Every, I think the last time we, we the checked... The big symposium. The, the cyber symposium, where he was attacked by uh, Antifa by... He got a poke. Cyber attacked. He got yeah. a little bit of a poke. Um, so yeah, nothing came of that because it was literally just a poke. Yeah. Uh, from someone who, uh, all accounts, appears to be a fan of his. Yeah, well. <laughs> and, uh, and, and still no election overturned. Yeah. But uh, Mike Lindell, he is back at one thing, and that is back on the airwaves of Fox News, and not as a guest contributor or you know, and like being interviewed or anything like that. No, he's he's just back on Fox via his My Pillow advertisements. Good for him. Uh, after pulling his My Pillow advertisements from their airwaves a few months back, when they refused to run a commercial that promoted that cyber symposium that we just talked about. Yeah, because they didn't want to get sued. Yeah, he was like, oh, that's the final straw. I'm pulling my all of my my pillow ads from your airwaves. Try to survive without me. Friendship ended with Fox News. Now Newsmax is my best friend. OAN is my, <laughs> actually I don't think he likes OAN either, Shit. right? I don't know what he's got anymore. Yeah, he's losing fa friends faster than Alex Jones, uh, who also has a very expensive lawsuit, Mike uh, Lindell. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, Lindell actually might have had an effect on Fox News's bottom line because it's reported that he spends tens of millions of dollars a year to have his MyPillow ads running on Fox. Uh, I believe in 2019, he spent $50 million on advertising. I want to see this guy's books. I mean, he's got to be making more than that in pillows. Yeah, it must be working out. As we've said, like buying a MyPillow is buying a piece of the Republican Party. It's saying to people, I support the Republican Party. These pillows are what, like $100 a piece? No, is, I don't think they're that expensive. They're but like, how much, how much is a pillow? I, I don't know, like 50 bucks maybe? And they're probably like $5 or less to actually... Well, I don't yeah, know, Elliot. They are made in America, so... Yeah, but it's just a bunch of chopped up fucking shit thrown in a bag. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a pillow. Either way, he has to be making a lot of money. Uh, yeah, I guess so. To be spending $50 million and then have a bunch left over to uh, tackle uh, a problem that doesn't exist. Election fraud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, he's back on the airwaves of Fox after his little quarrel with the company with a hot new ad that focuses on, you guessed it, cancel culture. Cancel culture. And it also has a... Uh, not subtle at all. Hefty amount of Christianity thrown in just for fun. Uh, it also has uh, his book bundled with the deal. Uh, you can get From Crack Addict to CEO, the book, and also four new pillows from a collection that literally features vivid 
color drawings of stories from the Bible, complete with literal paragraphs worth of scripture uh, on the cold side of the pillow. In case you want to, you know, you have a naughty dream. Ugh. Naughty dream, you have to flip it over yeah. and read a little scripture. It's right there for you. Oh, God, I'm soaking wet down there. I got, a, I got sins to repent for. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here's the clip of his new ad. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell. Cancel culture has not only affected myself and my pillow, but millions of you out there. Before all this started, I had already written in my memoir, I dedicate this book to anyone who's looking for hope. Well, right now, we're all looking for hope. By the time you're done reading my book, you will believe that with God, all things are possible. To thank all of you out there for your support, I'm offering some of the best prices ever on my pillow products, including this exclusive bundle. You get my book and these five my pillows. They're all scenes right out of the Bible, and the stories are on the back. You would normally get this bundle regularly, two nineteen. Now just ninety nine ninety eight with your promo code and free shipping. Yeah, prayer works for a lot of things, except overturning elections. I guess he prayed as hard as he possibly could for God to provide the proof that this election was a fraud, but I guess he didn't pray hard enough. Yeah, I guess and not. Now God's testing him. Better pray harder next time. Mike. God tested him with the meth, Yeah. and God tested him with this election, and, uh, you know, hopefully, and just God, like with the meth, he comes out on the better end of this. God tested him with those those other pills that are not meth. The doctor swears it's not meth. It's just... Uh, just. And no, these weren't developed with stem cells, <laughs> or else I wouldn't take them. No, I'm not. I would never do meth again. I do uh, Adderall. It's, it's a prescription drug. <laughs> And I like to just crush them up. Yeah, I like crush them up. Uh, you know, they're not very good at burning, but uh, you crush them up. You boof them. You snort yeah. them. They're great. And the best part is you're you're not doing drugs. <laughs> anyway, Lindell's trip back to the Fox News airways is not the only thing that he's in the news for this week. He's also drawn the ire of election officials in Idaho after his claims that the state had switched upwards of 35,000 votes from Donald Trump to Joe Biden uh, turned into a hand recount of all of their 2020 election results. Yeah. Seems inconvenient. Yeah, people, uh, these states, they really hate it when uh, their clearly verifiable election results get questioned because they're like, guys, this costs us millions of dollars yeah, to go through and count. And the results are always the same. They're just as far now from the 2020 election as they are to the 2022 the midterms, midterms yeah. that they are would probably rather be spending their time focusing on instead. Yes. But um, would it surprise anyone to learn that not only was this recount a giant waste of time, but also resulted in more votes found for Joe Biden. Just like those cyber ninjas. Huh. But that, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's the independent. A furious election official in Idaho says Mike Lindell's efforts to tarnish votes in his county by falsely alleging widespread voter fraud should make your blood boil. Several counties in Idaho have been conducting hand recounts after Mr. Lindell alleged that 35,000 votes had been switched from Donald Trump to Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election through electronic manipulation. In a scathing statement, Bonner County Clerk Mike Rosedale said claims of voter machine hacking completely missed the mark as none of the state's voting machines were connected to the Internet. Mr. Rosedale added it was infuriating that nobody from Mr. Lindell's team had contacted his office to check how votes were counted in his county. And would it have really mattered if they had done so? No. M Mr. You Lindell, these aren't connected to the internet. Well, they got computer chips yeah, in Yeah, neither is my phone. You ever heard of a thing called Wi-Fi? <laughs> the hackers, they can beam right into it. You don't understand the technology that Bluetooth. China has. China has technology that they don't even let their own citizens use. The 5G. Yeah, uh, that article continues. Since Mr. Lindell aired his claims of voter fraud in Idaho in a document he is calling The Big Lie, several Idaho counties have conducted recounts on the orders of Idaho Secretary of State Lawrence Denny. When the hand recount votes came back from Butte County, it was found that votes cast for former President Donald Trump fell from 1202 to 1193, while Joe Biden's votes remained at 130, according to Boise's Channel 11. The result in Camas, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, Kamas County remained almost identical with Mr. Trump's vote tally increasing from 507 to 508 and his opponents remaining the same at 149. Okay. All right. So he got one he got the one vote but yeah. then Joe Biden kind of flipped it on the other. Not that any of this mattered because no. it is Trump country. Yeah. So what did we learn? Yeah. I don't um, know. Just like with the Cyber Ninjas recount in Arizona, which I'm sure Mike Lindell is very upset he didn't come up with that name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the results were well within a margin of error, and uh, some were even confirmed to have gone to Joe Biden. So, 
Uh, yeah, this Idaho recount, it also comes after uh, the same accusations were made in Alabama, where the Republican Secretary of State flat out told Mike Lindell he was wrong, and it, was, it wasn't possible for his claims of wide-scale voter fraud to be true. Quote, all our voting machines are custom built, Secretary of State John Merrill told AL.com. There's no modem component. You can't influence them through a cell phone or a landline. There's no way they can be probed or numbers manipulated. Yeah, well, uh, if you had some sort of inspector gadget sort of thing where your finger turns into like a They come in a with wire. a glove that has a special key attached to it. Nanobots are up inside. They're crawling inside the uh, the machine, changing the votes around. They also crawl in my hair at night. I can't get rid of them. I pray them. and I pray, but they just don't leave. And I say, how, how do I get these bugs off me? And there's like, they're like, you don't have bugs on you, Mike. You're fine. I'm like, no, there's definitely bugs on me. Also, hey, Doc, you got any more of those pills? When I close my eyes, I see troops and the Chinese national anthem. They're marching, marching towards America. <laughs> oh, speaking of Fox News, uh, they had a uh, they funny thing. They they opened, I guess, a new studio in one of their uh, they, one of their locations. I think it was like D.C. or New York. Mm. And they had a rare a rare uh, turn the camera around moment where mm. they they you could see the, the people crew. in the yeah. Everyone wearing a mask. Of course. Every single person out of office course. masked up. And uh, <laughs> as we've said before, they all need to be vaccinated to even yeah. enter the building. Yeah, no, it's uh, this is known. Like they have a company policy for all this stuff, but it's it's this is the first time they've uh, accidentally shown their viewers that. You know why? It's because they're trying to trick liberals into not taking the vaccine. Yeah. Well, now that Fox is doing it. Joke, I'll... joke. Take your vaccines. Yeah. Now that Fox is doing it, what? Take your vaccines. I'll give you some sugar with it. <laughs> What, others are following suit now? You got OAN doing it? I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Newsmax is, like, run on a boat now in international waters, though. That'd be cool. Yeah. Like a pirate radio station. Yeah. You have to take a jet ski out to the boat if you want to be interviewed. It's like news, and then every couple hours, it's just a, it's like Alpha, Tango, Hotel. <laughs> Sonar beeps. <laughs> the message has been received. The old man has gone to sleep. Mm -hmm. The flower is in bloom. There you go. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, let's switch gears for a second to let you know about the latest venture in the long, successful career of Marshall Mathers, a.k.a. Eminem, who has now turned the lyrics to one of his songs into a full-blown business, a song that is older than a lot of people watching this, probably. And older than a lot of people who love the meme. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, they, they probably never, never even seen the movie. They're just like, yeah. Mom's yeah, spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. Hilarious. So when Eminem wrote the song Lose Yourself for 8 Mile, he probably didn't anticipate the fact that a very small section of the lyrics would go on to become a full-blown meme that eventually overshadowed the song itself. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. Yeah. The lyrics, they really hit peak meme in like the early 2010s. There was copy pastas, images, even remixes. My favorite one is just... Nothing but Mom's spaghetti the entire time? Yeah, well, it's... Uh, it's not. It's not just mom spaghetti. Like it's, it's done in a, in a but very the, clever way. But the response way. to everything. Is every mom's every line has mom spaghetti. Knees weak, mom spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> Got a vomit on his mom spaghetti. Yeah. It's great. It's a lot of fun. It's yeah. a fun meme. So it's it's remained a, a go to uh, reference to mainstay for yeah. many years now, and now Eminem himself has embraced the meme and opened a restaurant in his native Detroit called Mom Spaghetti, even handing out orders at the restaurant on opening day. Here's local outlet, the Detroit Free Press. A few lucky fans got a special taste of mom's spaghetti on Wednesday. <laughs> Hand served. You gotta eat it off my sweater already. <laughs> that would be great if they served it on sweaters. Yeah. Little plates that look like sweaters. This is not the best way to eat this. <laughs> also, like, just clearly, like, the song talks about vomiting it up. Yeah. So. But whatever, it's it's still cool. Yeah, it's been in Eminem's stomach already. <laughs> yeah, Eminem will vomit up the, the order for like you. Like a mama bird. <laughs> he takes care of his fans. Yeah. Uh, the article continues. The Detroit rapper spent several minutes manning the alley window of the new eatery on Woodward Avenue, treating the first 10 fans in a blocks long line to take out boxes of spaghetti and selfie snaps as he inaugurated the new restaurant inspired by one of his hit lyrics. Just 10? I know, that's kind of weak. He was there yeah. for minutes. Yeah. Like, you came all the way out there. Yeah. Just stick, like, a few, like, more than 10 people. If the line's blocks long, like, just hang out for a bit. Yeah, this is actually the perfect, like, meetup scenario because you can literally tell the person to get the fuck out. The food is hot. You're, it's cooling off. Yeah. People are hungry. People are very hungry behind yeah. you. Please leave. Yeah. So I don't understand why he didn't do it longer. Maybe there's, like, some... Because uh, he doesn't even have beef with ICP anymore. No. That would be the thing with the, the, the mom's spaghetti restaurant would get overrun with Juggalos if this was the late 90s. Yeah. 
So, yeah. anyways, the mom spaghetti walk-up window is in an alley between Union Assembly and the Fillmore. Above the window is a sign featuring a red heart with a fork through it and a sash with the mom spaghetti name. As the name implies, the menu is all spaghetti. And it's a simple menu with just a few items. There's mom spaghetti for $9, mom spaghetti with meatballs for $12, and a schketti sandwich for $11. That's so many carbs. Uh, <laughs> a vegan option for the health nuts out there, according to momspaghetti.com, is spaghetti with vegan balls for $14. Vegan balls. They got to call them something different than vegan balls. Uh, the store will exhibit rotating items from the Eminem archives. On display now are the rapper's original superhero costume from the Without Me music video. Oh, nice. And a pair of his custom Nike Air Jordan Shady XV sneakers. It was uh, a really uh, you had to be there moment in music history. Yeah. It was it was wild. Yeah, it was, it was, pretty, it was yeah. pretty great. The laid back uh, grunge era really uh, what came next really uh, destroyed that and uh, it was a lot of excess. I believe they call it like the well, I know the fashion at the time was like the Mick Bling yeah. Yeah, very excessive, very yeah. uh, very loud. But it was a fun time for music. The rivalries were incredible. Yeah, everyone hated each other. Mm-hmm. But, like, it was past the gangsta era. Like, after Tupac and Biggie died, like, no one was really... Like, gonna actually fight each other? Yeah, although that's apparently come back around now. All the, yeah. all the like, SoundCloud rappers from Chicago and Jacksonville are just getting killed constantly. Well, I think, it's like, a, if, at least in the late 90s, I think it was the competition on literally TRL. TRL had yeah. made music bigger than it had ever been, and it yeah. was literally the last high point for, you know, mainstream consumption of music as far as, like, whatever the record label puts out there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of like the last hurrah for this kind of music. So it was yeah. wild. They're certainly not spending that kind of money on music videos anymore. <laughs> They're not spending that kind of money on music at all anymore. No. Mm-hmm. Anyway, before we get to the rest of the news from this week, let's take a quick second to deal with the hunger that you're feeling from that last story. With yeah. Today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh. Hello. The fall harvest is officially on with HelloFresh. Count on seasonal recipes like pumpkin cinnamon rolls and Friendsgiving ready sides, as well as fresh, high quality ingredients that travel from the farm to your front door in less than a week. And HelloFresh's family-friendly menu is a big win for back to school season with easy, delicious recipes for drama-free dinners. In fact, HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, from vegetarian meals and calorie smart choices to extra special gourmet options. I had spaghetti this week, actually. It was, it, was great. And uh, not mom's spaghetti. It was my spaghetti. HelloFresh spaghetti. Yeah, well, I made it mine. Yeah. Your, I, uh, my I actually spaghetti. put this, uh, you know, they didn't ask you to, but I put this extra uh, cheese seasoning on top. Mm. It was actually, it made it cheesier. It was delicious. You can never have uh, too much cheese. My spaghetti. Uh, there is something for everyone to enjoy with recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. We're both big fans of the variety that HelloFresh offers. Uh, like, like I said, I had uh, a delicious spaghetti this week. I also had Korean tacos. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I like to change it up uh, as much as possible with at least two of them being very simple, easy, fast things. Yeah. And then like one to flex on. Just something a little bit exotic that you're not paying out the nose for at a restaurant. You're exactly. actually making it yourself and learning a little thing or two about cuisine. There you go. So start having fun in the kitchen like we are by going to HelloFresh.com slash NewsDump14 and using the code NewsDump14. That'll get you up to 14 free meals plus free shipping. Again, that is up to 14 free meals by going to HelloFresh.com slash NewsDump14 and using our code NewsDump14. This episode is also sponsored by Purple. Purple! Doesn't it seem like the world's against us getting a good night's sleep at this time of year? Yeah, there's a lot going on. I've, yeah, it's it's uh, it's weird. Mm -hmm. The seasons are changing. There's, it feels like fall, but it's still hot out. Yeah, there's it's, a lot uh, going on. A lot of it can easily stress you out. Sleep is one of the few escapes that we have these days. So mm -hmm. why not get the sleep that you need the best way possible with Purple? Only Purple mattresses have the grid. Its unique ventilated design allows air to flow through to help you sleep cool, even when it feels like a thousand degrees out. The grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips, no matter how you sleep. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, the grid bounces back as you move and shift. So you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you do with memory foam. As we've told you before, we have experience with the grid because of the purple pillow that they sent us. A secular pillow. Yeah, this, if, you're gonna, if you're in the market for a pillow, this is... We finally aligned a uh, purple this pillow one, with a yeah. story about the other guy that we're not going to mention right now. But yeah. uh, as far as I know, a secular pillow, which I appreciate. Yeah. I and mean, it's very comfortable. I, I'm going to assume it is. Yeah. 
it doesn't have Bible verses on it, which I appreciate. Yes. <laughs> that, that, so, would be, that would be weird. To me. Yeah. So uh, we both love our purple pillow. As we've said many times before, I love it so much. I take it with me whenever I go to a, a, like a small uh, staycation trip. Mm-hmm. Screw those hotel pillows. Yeah. I'm bringing mine. Uh, try your Purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns. Uh, financing is available, too. Purple is comfort reinvented. And right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. So go to purple.com slash news dump and use promo code news dump. That is purple.com slash news dump. Promo code news dump for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash news dump. Promo code news dump. Terms do apply. All right, back to the news with arguably the biggest entertainment news of this past week, a settlement has been reached between Scarlett Johansson and Disney relating to the tandem release of Black Widow in theaters and on their premium subscription platform. And the end result seems to have both parties happy with Disney announcing that she will still be involved in upcoming projects, something that seemed to be uh, maybe not so likely (laughs) as that lawsuit was playing out. Yeah. Uh, Here's The Hollywood Reporter. I am happy to have resolved our differences with Disney, stated Johansson. I'm incredibly proud of the work we've done together over the years and have greatly enjoyed my creative relationship with the team. I look forward to continuing our collaboration in years to come. Disney Studios chairman Alan Bergman added, I'm very pleased that we have been able to come to a mutual agreement with Scarlett Johansson regarding Black Widow. We appreciate her contributions to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and look forward to working together on a number of upcoming projects, including Disney's Tower of Terror. They both seem happy. Uh, there had to have been a large amount of money exchanged. Yeah, it sounds like she got paid, and you know what? Because this could have, if, if this actually, you know, kept on, this could have and possibly would have set a precedent for uh, streaming salaries when it relates to movies that are uh, released in theaters at the same it, time. It also sounded like she was 100% in the right with this one. Yeah, because she had, a, like, a, yeah. I don't know what the movie term is, but... Uh, in music, it's like points on the back end or something like that, yeah. where it's like you earn more of a salary based on how the movie performs she had in theaters. A, the entire contract for this movie was set up for a theatrical release. And in the like evidence that was even shown in various outlets, like in emails, uh, execs from Disney were like, well, if the release were to change, we would have to renegotiate the terms because... I'm like, well, maybe she won't notice. <laughs> uh, maybe she didn't, but her lawyers definitely did. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, that article continues. The explosive suit filed by the actress in July in Los Angeles Superior Court claimed that the studio sacrificed the film's box office potential in order to grow its fledgling Disney Plus streaming service. Disney countered that Johansson was paid $20 million for the film. Uh, In her complaint, Johansson said the Marvel tentpole had been guaranteed an exclusive theatrical release when she signed her deal. She alleged that her contract was breached when the film was simultaneously released on Disney Plus. According to the complaint, Disney's move not only increased the value of Disney Plus, but also intentionally saved Marvel and thereby itself what Marvel itself referred to as, quote, very large box office bonuses that Marvel otherwise would have been obligated to pay Miss Johansson. Seems pretty clear cut. Yeah, I would say so. So, I mean... Sounds like everyone, she got paid, and, uh, I mean, you don't have to feel bad for And also, involved. Disney's probably happy that this doesn't set a precedent for future deals. I mean, they're still doing a deal with, uh, what's her name, for uh, e- extending the Cruella universe. Uh, <sighs> okay. So, yeah. yeah. You don't have to really care about uh, how ri- how much richer Scarlett Johansson got, but there's, uh, in similar, in something much more relevant, uh, there's currently, ha- the strike hasn't been declared yet, but mm-hmm. the... Uh, the IATSE strike that seems like it's going to happen is over similar concerns, but for below the line people where for the last 10 years, working on a Netflix show has been treated like if you were working on a YouTube web series. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. your people, everyone who works on like something for, so if you're working on like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, this is like the most expensive show ever. And you're but getting it's digital content. Yeah. You're getting yeah. compensated as if you were working on like funny yeah. or die or some shit like that. So that's what the strike is over. And uh, I think, they, they've got a great case. They've got a great case. So. Yeah. Um, in this, in the Scarlett Johansson thing, it's like they what I, the article they, it does it doesn't indicate the amount that the party settled on. You have to assume that it was very substantial or substantial enough to make her happy. Not only happy, but happy enough to continue working with the company. Yeah, I'm that sh- she came out I'm against. Sure they just gave her whatever the hell she wanted because having this go to trial would have been embarrassing for and them. very bad for. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what I assume is like they, because this wasn't released just on Disney Plus. It wasn't just like put out there. Yeah. It was through their premium thing where you had to pay like thirty dollars for it or something like that. Oh. So I'm assuming I'm assuming that they took the analytics from that and was like, all right, here's what it would have done in theatrical based yeah. on how much it sold on the platform. There's your bonus for it, 
and uh, we'll send you a nice bottle of Dom. Uh-huh. Congratulations on the new baby with yeah. the guy from SNL. Yeah. So uh, that's that's probably what happened, but um, whatever. Uh. Anyway, speaking of the impact that streaming has had on the entire industry, this week, as a part of this year's Code Conference, Netflix CEO Ted Sarandos provided some rarely seen data regarding the viewership of the company's proprietary content. And the numbers are actually kind of insane. Obviously, Netflix is massive, and their paid subscriber numbers are very clear about that, with, with just over 200 million as of the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. But how many of those accounts actually watch everything that Netflix puts out? A lot, <laughs> apparently. Their subscriber base is uh, active. Here are some numbers from a slide regarding their most popular series and films. And according to the data, these numbers are based on accounts that have watched at least two minutes of the title in its first 28 days on Netflix. So people may have just sampled the goods without fully committing to a movie or a series, or maybe they were just scrolling and it was autoplaying and it's just like, how do I make this fucking thing stop? That's true. It could, like, if autoplay shows two minutes of whatever it is, I mean, that... Uh... Is, that a, is that really a view? Yeah, I turned that off forever ago, yeah. uh, so I don't even. It's have really it annoying. You have to log in on your computer to do it on the computer to change it. Not to on change that. it on your streaming device, yeah. But so. uh, as we'll see, there is data that, in some ways, is different, but uh, in some ways, like confirms that people actually do continue watching it. Right. We'll get to it, but uh, yeah, here's here's, here's some just data. Uh, yeah, this is based on people that watched it for at least two minutes. Here's the numbers: Bridgerton season one, 82 million accounts viewed it. Lupin Part 1 and Season 1 of The Witcher, 76 million each. Sex Life Season 1 and Stranger Things 3 both got 67 million. Uh, Tiger King barely beat out The Queen's Gambit at 64 million versus 62 million, uh, which is, this is a lot. This is a lot of fucking views. A uh, show about chess. Yeah. Well, you think about, like, The Walking Dead, which, like, at yeah. its peak was getting, what, 5 million views a week? I mean, I, of course, people are going to watch it after that, right. but, like, these numbers are not insignificant. Yeah, these are big. Uh, as for films, Extraction, which I I think I've heard of, but I've never even didn't look into. Is that about a dentist? Yeah, it's about a, it's it's basically the prequel to Willy Wonka. Extraction. Uh, that got 99 million I've accounts. Never watching. even heard of this. Uh, that was followed by Bird Box, uh, oh, yeah. which is 89 million. Spencer Confidential, uh, 85 million. Six Underground at 83 million. That was the Michael Bay one? Uh, yeah, and uh, for all the Snyder heads out there, Army of Dead got 75 million views. That's fucking nuts. Which, like, that's the thing I was like, it's like... But this is also, this is international, right? They're I think this is overall. The, they're premiering this shit in, like, hundreds of countries at once, so... Yeah, yeah, but the numbers are still insane. Yeah. And it's like, that's the thing, though, is like, was Extraction just sitting on the homepage because it was their big movie of the week? So it's the first thing you see when you log on. So even if you click the button and then walk away to like get some food or something for your Netflix thing, like, does that count as a view? I can't imagine being that person that just turns on Netflix and just whatever's in that first position. All right. They know best. <laughs> but that's the thing is, you know, going down the line of uh, at least Netflix is two minutes because as we said before, YouTube is somewhere between 30 and 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. Facebook actually got in a lot of trouble. Just five seconds. Yeah, because it was just long enough to actually <laughs> scroll by <laughs> with no That's audio either, by the yeah, way. You yeah. didn't have to have the audio on. So they got in a bunch of trouble for that because they essentially lied, ruined uh, <laughs> lied to a lot of businesses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways. Yeah, so the second slide showed the popularity of series and films based on total hours viewed, which gives a Oh, better idea of what people actually committed to watching. It looks like people completely gave up on the Lupin series and on Sex Life after starting those, uh, which bumped Money Heist, Stranger Things, and The Witcher up a few notches. Uh, another anomaly on the series side is 13 Reasons Why, which doesn't appear on the most popular by views list, but is well within the top 10 for seasons one and two on the list for hours viewed. So a lot less people started watching it, but the people who, who did seem to... Yeah, really love it. They yes. love teenage suicide. Yes, they're a very active uh, viewing community. Yeah. Uh, over on the film side of things, for hours watched, Bird Box hit the top spot, and everything else was sort of similar, except for The Kissing Booth Two, <laughs> cracking into the top ten. What the fuck is that? That not a lot of not as many people watched it, but when they did, they fucking loved it. The Kiss, and it's a sequel. Yeah, I mean the first one. I mean they they didn't include it because this is modern numbers. Yeah. Maybe they're from a certain quarter or whatever, but uh, it must have been. Must have been a cinematic experience for the ages. All right. And yeah, uh, yeah Martin Scorsese's The Irishman uh, was also in the top 10 despite, you know, 
not appearing in the most viewed. That which makes sense. sense. It's like six hours long. It's very long. Like five people watched the full thing and it got into the most viewed. I finally got around to watching that a few months ago because I just couldn't. I, I had it just sitting there in my queue for two years. And I was like, all right, I, 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 I got the day free. I'm going to sit down and watch The Irishman. The day. I got the whole day. I mean, it's three and a half hours long. Yeah, it is. And I don't like, I don't like stopping movies in the middle and like coming back. I, mm -hmm. I want to be able to watch it all in one sitting. And it was good. It was it was very long. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'm going to get blasted for this in the comments, but you know what I just finally started watching? Similar? No. The Sopranos. I mean, it's a great time to do it. Yeah. I, 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 look, I think I've seen like maybe two or three episodes when I was young, when it was around. I need to But I never it. sat down and watched it. And guess what? It's a great show. It's fantastic. I, I haven't watched it since 2000. Eight when it yeah. ended, so it's been 13 years for me. I, I, I'm definitely due for a rewatch. I only watched uh, the first season of The Wire like three months ago, so similar, yeah. uh, similar thing. Like I've just been putting it off for 20 years. Well, that's the thing is I watched <laughs> The Wire uh, like when Reddit was first getting big yeah. because they would always like infrequently do like the best TV series of all time. Yeah. That was always number one. Yeah. So. So I mean, everyone gets around to stuff. I you know what you don't see on this list, and now that it's uh, October. You know, you gotta remind people that it's out there, ready to be watched. Huey Halloween. <laughs> Didn't you it, watch that last year? Yeah, it was fucking terrible. It was one, one of the best movies. One of the worst movies of all time. One of the best movies of all time. Fucking trash. There, there are so many better scary movies, <laughs> Halloween theme movies to watch than that. If you want to watch, watch uh, Uncut Gems and then Huey Halloween. No. For a real nice digestive. Do it the other way around, so you come out of it respecting Adam Sandler instead of. Uh, well, no, he didn't like. They, it wasn't confirmed that this was the movie, but he did say if Uncut Gems didn't win yeah. uh, an Oscar, that he was going to make the worst movie of all time. Uh, yeah, it's. He lived up to his word. <laughs> Anyways, moving on, we got a bit of good news and bad news for some stories that we've been following recently, relating to two people in particular. First, the bad news. Mm. Earlier this week, Bam Margera was thrown back into rehab as part of a court order, mm. and uh, also because uh, he was causing a disturbance at a resort in St. Petersburg, Florida. From TMZ, law enforcement sources tell TMZ deputies took the jackass star to rehab after responding to a Sunday morning call about an emotionally distressed person at the Don Cesar Resort Hotel in St. Pete Beach. When cops arrived, we're told deputies were given a heads up about a court order directing Bam to go to rehab. So, police assisted. We're told Bam was not arrested and he doesn't have any pending charges. Again, we say this every time. You you have to hope the best for this person. He is uh, suffering dearly, yeah. but also not entirely confident that anything is going to work at this point in the long term because he's proven over and over again that he can't stay clean and refuses to do so. Yeah. He's, uh, he's basically in the position Steve-O was in 20, 25 years ago. It's uh, Well, he went clean. He got clean tw like 12 years ago or 13 years ago. Oh, I thought it was longer than that. But... No, it was after like Jackass 3 or 2 or and, something yeah, like that. Steve-O was, uh, he was like going to die for a while. Then. There's a documentary. It's on, yeah. the full thing's on YouTube. Yeah, it was an MTV documentary. Uh, like a true it? life or something. Yeah, but like, yeah. Steve-O just let them like film him. Like, well, he's filmed house, a lot of it yeah. because the whole thing was like he could never be off camera. So he started filming himself doing it. His house is just filled with like empty like canisters. canisters. Yeah, I believe just, that was just, like 2007 just, or eight. It's uh, fucking wild. But he's been completely clean since and successfully. Like yep. hasn't relapsed. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, again, hope the best for Bam, but like he's got to want it himself. And he pretty obviously does not. No. Yeah. But on the good side of things, and uh, news about people who were at their peak of popularity in the early 2000s. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Blink 182's Mark Hoppus is officially cancer free after going public with his uh, battle earlier this year. In an Instagram post, Mark wrote the following Just saw my oncologist, and I'm cancer free. Thank you, God, and universe, and friends, and family, and everyone who sent support and kindness and love. Still have to get scanned every six months, and it'll take me until the end of the year to get back to normal, but today is an amazing day, and I feel so blessed. Can I get a W in the chat? I gave him a W. Yeah. I'll give a W to the doctors who he didn't thank. Yeah. yeah. I remember he posted like a month ago. He's just like, well, uh, in about four weeks, I find out if I'm done with this or going to literally die. So I can't imagine. <laughs> fingers crossed, yeah. guys. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, any anyways, in news that's uh, just plain confusing... It appears as though Shane Dawson uploaded a song to Spotify titled, I Fucked My Cat. But he said he didn't fuck his cat. Yeah, it's a reference to a discussion that he had on his podcast a few years back where it really seemed like he was admitting to sexually abusing his poor cat from Insider. 
On the controversial podcast episode, Shane said, one time I laid my cat down on her back and then moved her little chick. I- I'm not even going to read this. It- it- it's in the Insider nasty, article. Yeah, yeah, it's disgusting. Uh, and then he-, he alludes to the fact, doesn't allude to it. He basically says that he, like, <laughs> on his cat. <laughs> collated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and da- Dawson later apologized in a series of tweets and said he told the story for shock value. Uh, he said it was fake and he was embarrassed by it. I didn't f- my cat. I didn't come f- on my cat. I didn't put my d- anywhere near my cat. I've never done anything weird with my cats. I promised myself I wasn't going to make an apology videos after last year's thing. So I'm just trying to be as short and honest with this as possible. He wrote that that tweet was so fucking good. Cause yeah, like because like it came like, out of nowhere. And like I'm like I don't know what you're referring to, <laughs> but it sounds bad. It's like uh, my my I didn't fuck my cat T-shirt is. Uh, Raising a lot of questions that are already answered by the shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's like 99% of people who like wouldn't follow Shane Dawson drama, yeah. but maybe followed him on Twitter years ago were just like, sounds like an admission that I, someone I did that something guy, to their cat. I think that guy fucked his cat. <laughs> uh, anyway, as for oh, the song, yes, it, it appears as though his Spotify account was hacked. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, whoever was behind it, they uploaded the track as a troll. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's from the same article. On Spotify, the track I Fucked My Cat appears under 2020, uh, 2021 releases. <laughs> uh, Dawson has not commented on its existence, but followers have speculated it may be a result of his account getting hacked. An Instagram account by the name of Lil Radio, which also appears as an artist on the track, appeared to take credit for the hack on his Instagram story highlights, posting a screenshot of a tweet about the song with the text, we did that tagging three other accounts. The owner of the Instagram account did not respond to Insider's request for a comment. In the song, a vocalist thanks Dawson and says he too wants to have sex with his cat. In one line, he says, her ass is so fat, and then asks, damn, why my cat look at me like that? <laughs> this is good rhymes. This is, uh, I, I, uh, this is very terrible. You shouldn't abuse animals in any way possible at, at all. But it is funny that like this story probably isn't true, but that is just haunting him. Yeah. <laughs> and he had to come out and like deny it, um, but also didn't deny that this song wasn't his. Yeah. So apparently Shane Dawson did not respond for press inquiries related to the I Fuck My Cat song. So we have no idea how he feels about it. Uh, probably hates it, but maybe he loves it. Yeah. Who's to say? Anything to uh, take attention away from all of the other bad things Shane Dawson has done. Sure, yeah. Time. Check it out. <laughs> Check out the... Is this a good misdirection? Anyways, finally today, uh, I started playing uh, the Jeffrey Bezos MMO New World it's yeah, Amazon game. Yeah, where he gets play as Jeff Bezos, right? Uh, no, actually, there's many articles that indicate that uh, any or a lot of variations on the name Jeff Bezos or Jeffrey Bezos or just Bezos yeah. at all is uh, banned from the character creation. So you can't play as Jeff Bezos or anything like that. I got pretty close. I, I successfully landed Slazos. Okay. On there, um, I'm having fun with it. I know it's an Amazon product, so fuck it. But like, I, uh, you know, um, I have been into MMOs for a very long time. I played WoW uh, in vanilla, and uh, I haven't played again. As as I've said before on the show, like I, this year has been pretty dry for games for me so far. And this one uh, definitely scratches a good itch. It's uh, a very active MMO. That's uh, it's like a hack and slash, realistic graphics. Uh, kind of more similar to Elder Scrolls than WoW, but oh, uh, okay. it's fun. And the community's, at least right now, very active. So it's just like fun seeing all the dumb shit people are saying in chat and, and stuff like that. But overall, it plays really well and the mechanics, it, it works. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm, I'm about 10 hours in. And I'm not bored yet. There's Is a lot to take in. WoW, but are you going to drop uh, 100-something hours? I don't think so. I'm kind of just like trying to like st- like fill the gap between this and Battlefield. Because yeah. Battlefield's my next big, like, anticipated title. I guess Halo Infinite, which apparently is in... You can play the beta right now this weekend. Oh. Um, Call of Duty Vanguard, I again, I played the beta, even though it was broken. If it had fully worked, I still think it's pretty boring. It is the yeah. same COD we've been playing for 10 years. I mean, I'm excited for the new Warzone map, but other than that, don't care. Yeah. Much, much more interested in Battlefield. At least it'll be something different. Yeah. Well, it'll be Battlefield, but... <laughs> Yeah, anyways, uh, that's it for this week's episode of News Dump. If you haven't watched it already, uh, check out our most recent episode of Tech News Day about YouTube banning all anti-vax content. And uh, our, our previous video about Dog the Bounty Hunter joining the uh, search for Brian Laundry, which still no significant updates as yeah, of yet. The scent has gone cold. Yeah. So 
We'll see what the dog comes up with. Yeah. Anyways, check both of those out. Subscribe, comment, and like, and we will see you soon for Weekly Weird News. Bye-bye.